Shalom and greetings, everybody. Brother Nicholas James Vanderlein, Victory for the People of Israel from By the Narrow Path, which are Yahweh and Yeshua's Ten Commandments. Today is the first day of the 11th month, so it's Rosh Chodesh. Not a new moon, but a new month. And it is January 18th, 2020, and I'm filming this video in Famagusta, Cyprus. This video is titled is Yeshua Taught Against the Dead Sea Scrolls. So Master Yeshua the Messiah taught against the Dead Sea Scrolls, specifically the Damascus document. A lot of the extra-canonical Dead Sea Scrolls are good, and much of it is inspired scripture. But there are some texts that are not good, as best as I can presently discern. One of the texts I know that is bad is the horoscopes and astrological physiognomies. Also, I'm starting to find issues with all of their lunar observations. We don't know the origin of the horoscope fragment and the reason it was in their possession. All we can do is speculate the reason for it being there. Some pastors today have cult materials and publications in their libraries for reference to know what the opposition is teaching, so that could have been a possibility. We know for a fact, at one time, there were righteous Zadok priests at Qumran and left us amazing and important texts such as the Temple Scroll. I have not read all the extra-canonical writings of the Dead Sea Scrolls, but I have read a decent portion, and as I was reading the text called the Damascus Document, I came across some startling information. I found at least five extra rules. These are called the Takanot in the Damascus Document that Master Yeshua, the Messiah, directly and openly corrected in the Gospel accounts. Unsurprisingly, the rules which he corrected and taught against were extra Sabbath rules. I am making this video to document and identify these five extra false Sabbath rules of the Damascus document. And at the end of the video, I will speculate on the possibilities of what was the Damascus document doing at Qumran in cave 4, 5, and 6. Cave 4, 5, and 6, right here. And also, I'm going to speculate on which group the document and rules belong to. Or actually, I'm going to be able to prove in this video on who that Damascus document belonged to. Lastly, I will go over other false rules and doctrines I found in the Damascus document. And it's important to know that some groups out there, there are groups out there that think that everything found in Qumran is good and that it's of the way or the Hadarek movement. And that is not true because in this document, I will prove to you that there are well, we'll save that for the end of this document. I will save that for the end of this presentation. So in that graphic, here is Qumran right here. And this is the Dead Sea. This is the Qumran community. There are also Dead Sea Scrolls found here. Bar Kokhba's cave people in Gedi and Masada. You have some more of Bar Kokhba's caves, other scrolls. But we're dealing in the scrolls that are found right here in this predominant region right here. And as you can see, cave 4, cave 5, and cave 6. In these cave systems right here was where is the, is the scrolls that we are dealing with. There are a lot of really good scrolls in here, like the Copper Treasure Scroll. That was a great scroll. Psalm Scroll and the Temple Scroll, another amazing scroll right here. And then there's also other good uh, scrolls that were found in here. But as you can see, in this area right here, there was 140 biblical scrolls right here found in this area. Um, so we're going to be dealing with this Damascus document. This is an overview from Wikipedia regarding the Damascus document. I mean, the Damascus document, also called the Damascus Covenant and the Book of the Covenant of Damascus, Cairo Damascus document, or the Damascus Rule. It's an ancient Jewish document that some scholars suggest serve as a bridge document connecting Judaism's post-exilic Enochian Assyrian majority. This is false to the asserted leadership of its radical minority Qumran Assyrian community that was established in the isolation near the Dead Sea Shores. So I'm going to be proving that this understanding is incorrect. It forms part of the Dead Sea Scrolls found near Qumran in 1947, but two fragments had already been discovered earlier, 50 years earlier, in Cairo, Geniza. It talks about the sex halakha while condemning others as the wicked of Judah. So this text and document is condemning all the other people as the wicked of Judah. So we're going to see who the wicked are in this document compared to what Master Yeshua the Messiah taught and whom he rebuked. Since I'm going to be going over the takanot, the extra rules that were applied to the Sabbath 
I want to first give a Sabbath disclaimer because the Sabbath is good. And Master Yeshua the Messiah is the master of the Sabbath. He taught us, well, he instituted the Sabbath. He created the Sabbath. He was co-created with the Father at creation. All things were created by him and through him. Without nothing was made that was made. And on the seventh day, Elohim sanctified the seventh day and made it holy. And Yeshua taught us the Sabbath by demonstrating it and living it out to us how to keep it. He kept the Sabbath perfectly and he never cooked or baked on the Sabbath. He never did his own pleasure on the Sabbath. He never practiced servile or domestic work on the Sabbath. Yes, he did his father's work on the Sabbath. And just as the priests do their own work in the temple service on the Sabbath and aren't guilty, and the same with the performance of the circumcision being done on the Sabbath. Remember, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. But that doesn't mean that we're not supposed to reverence it and follow the simple instructions of our Elohim. So here's the Damascus document. I cut and pasted it in this work Google document um, that will be available in the description box. And this blue section right here is just the, uh, the translator's notes on the document. It starts right here at the exhortation and it comes all the way down here. It's like 21 pages basically 20 pages deep so it's a really big document but we're going to be specifically looking at the concerning the sabbath right here to observe it according to its law this is the sabbath section of this particular document and we're going to be looking at the rules that they made regarding the sabbath that they put in the following slides are at least five extra sabbath rules of the damascus document that master yeshua the messiah is recorded into the Gospels to have publicly admonished and corrected. Damascus document false Sabbath rule number one. Quoting the Damascus document right here. No man shall carry perfumes on himself while going and coming on the Sabbath. He shall lift neither stone nor dust in his dwelling. No man minding a child shall carry it whilst going and coming on the Sabbath. And so we're, this rule is about picking stuff up and carrying it on the Sabbath, such as dust. And in John chapter 5, verse 1 through 18, we have a record of Master Yeshua telling the lame man to pick up his mat and walk on the Sabbath. And remember the reaction that it got from everybody, all the religious people, they hated it. In Mark chapter 1, verse 29 through 31, Master Yeshua lifted Simon Peter's mother by her hand when he healed her on the Sabbath. So he gave her her hand and, you know, lifted her up, giving her a lift up out of the, out of the bed. And then in John chapter 9, verse 1 through 16, Master Yeshua, he spat on the ground and with the dust, with the dust, he made mud, the dust right here. He made mud. And then he placed it on the eyes and healed the blind man on the Sabbath. Wow. Hallelujah for this understanding that this right here, this we always wonder, what was the purpose of this dust that he made to pick up the dust and put it on the Sabbath, on the man's eyes? Well, he was showing all of the religious hypocrites who were making all these extra rules on the Sabbath that he is the master of the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Damascus document false Sabbath rule number two. No man shall eat on the Sabbath day except that which he is already prepared. He shall eat nothing lying in the fields, and no man shall walk in the field to do business on the Sabbath. In Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through 28, Master Yeshua and his disciples walked through a field and picked up and ate grain. And it came to pass that he went through the grain fields on that Sabbath day. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of grain. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he, Matthew Yeshua, said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and he, he was hungry and, he that, and they that were with him? how he went into the house of Elohim in the days of Abathar the high priest. And he did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. 
And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Master of the Sabbath. So, since we're on the topic of David, David was hungry. They didn't have any food. And rather than baking bread, which would have been violation of baking on the Sabbath day, he went in and ate the show bread. This is why he... This is why he was, this is why this was a righteous act, because he was hungry and he ate what was available to him rather than cooking and violating the Sabbath. He kept the Sabbath holy. Hallelujah for the understanding here. Same thing with Master Yeshua and his disciples. Master Yeshua is like David. He's the David type. He's the son of David. And he did the same thing. They were hungry. And what did they do? They didn't roast the grain. They plucked the grain. And they made the grain and they ate the grain raw and uncooked. As they were walking through the field, Yeshua directly corrected this law, this false Sabbath rule of the Pharisees and their Damascus document. Damascus document, false Sabbath rule number three. No man shall profane the Sabbath for the sake of riches or gain on the Sabbath day, but should any man fall into watcher, or fire, let him not be pulled out with the aid of a ladder or rope, or such some some such utensil. So this is having to do with saving life. If you fall in the water and you're drowning, nobody can get you a rope to pull it out. No one can get you, if you're in fire, same thing. It says, let him not be pulled out with the aid of the rope or the ladder of the utensil, okay? In Luke chapter 14, verse one through six, Yeshua dying, at the house of, the, of a Pharisee and asked them, the Pharisees, if it was against the law to heal on the Sabbath day. And they stayed silent. Remember, the Pharisees didn't like Yeshua doing miracles on the Sabbath day because they considered it work. And then Master Yeshua asked them if their son were to fall into a well of water, if they would go get the son out on the Sabbath. He asked them this question and they didn't speak. He then healed the man that had the dropsy. So as we see, Matthew Yeshua corrected the false Sabbath rules of the Damascus document, the Pharisees. Damascus document, false Sabbath rule number four. No man shall assist a beast to give birth on the Sabbath day. And if it should fall into a cistern or a pit, he shall not lift it out on the Sabbath day. And in Matthew chapter 12, verses 11 through 14, in a synagogue, Master Yeshua questioned the leaders of the synagogue and proved them to be hypocrites using their own Sabbath law from the Damascus document. Now quoting the scripture, Yeshua is talking to them, quote, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? This is the question that he had, which is their law. Quote, how much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against Yeshua, how they might destroy him. Again, this was the Pharisees. Damascus document, false Sabbath rule number five. No man shall walk more than 2,000 cubits after a beast to pasture it outside his town. So they permitted you to take your, your, your beasts out to the field. In Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 17, on the Sabbath, Master Yeshua healed a woman who had a hunchback and nerve pain for 18 years. Master Yeshua's healing of this woman incited the anger of the synagogue leader whom Yeshua then called a hypocrite and corrected him with his own law, the law of the Damascus document. Master Yeshua said to the synagogue leader, quote, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? That's their law right here. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, 
be loosed from the bond of, on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by Yeshua, done by him. Hallelujah. So who did the Damascus document belong to that was found in Qumran, that was found in Cairo, Egypt? In the examples I provided for false Sabbath rules number four and five, we see Master Yeshua correcting the leaders of the synagogue and prove them to be hypocrites of their own laws. In the examples I proved for false Sabbath rules number one, two, and three, we see Master Yeshua correcting the Pharisees. So the Damascus document that was found in Qumran belongs to the synagogue leaders, the scribes, and the Pharisees. The synagogue leaders and the Pharisees. The Damascus document did not belong to the righteous Zadok priests that stayed faithful, which I will speculate a little bit more on who belonged to coming up. I believe that the Damascus document evolved into the Mishnah and the Talmud at some point. I suspect the Damascus document was in full or part of the original Pharisaic rules that set the precedence and later evolved into the Mishnah and Talmud today. This Pharisaic precedence to add to, add to, the, to put on their own rules or to interpret and create new rules around the rules of the commandments called the Takanot of the Pharisees has evolved the last 2,000 years into the Mishnah or of Hasidic and Orthodox modern Judaism. And a couple examples of what it has evolved into. Orthodox Jewish people cannot press an elevator button on the Sabbath day. They're not allowed to press an elevator button on the Sabbath day. Now, how ridiculous is that? And not only are they not allowed to do that, also they're not allowed to tear their toilet paper on the Sabbath day. Instead, they have to do all of their toilet paper tearing on the day before. Crazy, right? It's like, what a weird, strange law, right? It's crazy. So these are the people that Master Yeshua was rebuking. Should we learn anything from them? Should we accept, adopt anything from their customs or their understanding of scriptures? No. Now back again to speculate on the Damascus document. What is the Damascus document doing in Capes 4, 5, and 6 at Qumran? And I don't know for certain at this time, but there are only three possibilities or explanations. One, Qumran eventually became corrupted by the Pharisees, where Pharisee people had infiltrated and became a, a ruling group in the, in, the, in the grouping there. Two, Qumran eventually became corrupted by the leaven of the Pharisees. Or number three, the Qumranites stayed blameless and the document was used for oppositional research, just knowing what the enemy is teaching, the opposition is teaching. I presume if Qumran's community rules, there's another scroll out there called the community rules, and that scroll, if that scroll contains similar or, or punishments or teachings as to found in the Damascus document, it would mean that the community eventually became corrupted by the Pharisees. So we have to take a look at more of the other documents and see what goes. So this, the Damascus document, it has punishments for like not keeping the Sabbath or breaking a Sabbath rule. Like people had to do like jail time and things like that. And I believe that in the community rules, there might be something like that as well. I'm not 100% certain. We have to take a look at that. So hallelujah for giving me the insight and understanding of this matter. Hallelujah. And to finish this presentation, I thought that I would go through some other false rules and doctrines that are in the Damascus document that caught my eye in my only one time reading the Damascus document. There could be more. But rather than, this video is already long enough, but there is a link for this shared Google document in the description box. Feel free to go ahead and read it. This is, the blue part is the introduction. And down here in these areas that are highlighted, these are other parts that are in the document that violate the Torah and the teachings that are there other things that are alarming and whatnot that you can go ahead and take a look at for yourself. So again, I hope that this is a blessing to you. We have to test, it says to test all things and hold fast to that which is good. And what I found in this document, this is not a good document. This is an evil document of evil people that went against the truth that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So with that being said, hallelujah for our righteous teacher, Master Yeshua, the Messiah, who corrected the Pharisees, 
who taught us through his life how to keep it perfectly. And one more thing as I attempt to conclude this video. I want to get back to the Wikipedia page regarding the Damascus document. And remember that the Damascus document, they the covenant is open to all Israelites who accept the sex holocaust. So their rules. If you can if you accept the rules, you're accepted. But it also condemns the others that don't as the wicked of Judah. So who is the wicked of Judah, really? It's the people that wrote this document. It's the key people that instituted the sex halakha. That is the wicked of the Judah. It's the Pharisees. It was the, the synagogue leaders. 